For this practice, um, I do recognize that everyone is at home right now. Um, so I would like to offer some modified props that you can use at home. So um, if you do have um, yoga props and you've done yin yoga before, get it all together. Um, so one thing that is very common in yin yoga is a bolster. So instead of a bolster, if you don't have one, you can use a big cushion, so a nice firm cushion. Um, if you are using a cushion or a pillow is fine too, um, grab two. <laughs> so a bolster is generally uh, much longer than a cushion and um, you'll need it just to support different areas of your body through the practice. So two cushions are very helpful in this practice and um, also if you do have a block this is not needed but I'll offer some adjustments with the block as well to get deeper into each posture. Another thing that we'll be using today is either a strap if you have one at home or we can use a scarf as well. So grab um, one of those two items for the practice. And then lastly, an eye mask, of course, is optional as well. A sleeping mask works really great as well. And this is just so that you can, um, again, like draw your sensory information inward, not worrying about what's happening in the room when you're relaxing in each posture. Okay, so. You can begin. And I will be using um, the sound bowls. I think you can see them in the camera there. And these again are also um, really beautiful for releasing tension in the body. The sound frequencies um, also entrain with your brain to bring you into a more relaxed state um, and also promote um, self healing through releasing your happy hormones in your body. So we'll begin now our practice. I'll invite you just to sit in a comfortable seated position, Sukhasana, easy pose. If you like, you can again put anything underneath you. I have a blanket underneath me. Blanket's really good for this practice too in Shavasana to support your knees, sit bones. And we'll bring our hands into Chin Mudra, placing the pointer finger against the pad of the thumb and then relaxing the other fingers down. Taking a few nice, slow, deep breaths, inhaling, your belly expands, your chest expands all the way, and exhaling very slowly, contracting the chest, and then the belly button towards the spine. Inhaling, belly expands, chest expands, reaching your fullest capacity, and when you're ready, release, relax. Bring full awareness into your body, just relaxing your mind, relaxing your breath. And now a gentle gaze, slowly open your eyes to view the video. And we're going to begin um, our practice with Chandra Baden. So this is a type of pranayama breathing practice, um, which is really great for yin yoga because it is our moon breath. Um, and yin is connected to the moon, our, um, our ability to cool our bodies, to relax, to be receptive, intuitive. Um, so we'll be doing this practice now. So bring our middle and our pointer finger to the third eye in between the eyebrows. And then we're going to use our thumb and our ring finger to close our nostrils. Okay, so it's an alternate nostril breathing technique. We're going to only inhale through the left nostril. This is our Ida. Um, our Ida Nadi, our moon nostril, and then exhaling through the right. So we're going to be completing an entire circuit. Inhaling left, exhaling right. Okay. So begin closing the right nostril with the thumb, lifting the elbow high, long straight spine, and just taking a few deep inhales and exhales through the left nostril. Good, one more deep inhale together. Exhaling all the way, sticking with the left. Now inhaling left, belly expands, chest expands. 
Closing the left nostril, opening the right, exhaling right. Closing the right nostril, inhaling left. So you're completing the full circuit here. Closing the left, exhaling right. When you're ready, inhaling left. You might be breathing at a different pace than me, that's totally fine. Closing the left, exhaling right. And if you're comfortable, you can begin closing the eyes, inhaling left. Closing the left, exhaling right. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the jaw as you inhale. And exhale. Good. A few more rounds on your own. Remember always inhaling through the left nostril and exhaling through the right. When you're done your three rounds, just relaxing your hands onto your knees, palms facing up, keeping the eyes closed, and just observing your natural breath. Observing how your breath is compared to the previous control breath. Are you feeling more relaxed now, more centered, more in tuned? Good. Now continue breathing, taking inhales and exhales, nice, slow and deep breaths, and sending your awareness to your heart center. Envisioning a beautiful, golden, luminescent light vibrating at the heart center. And with each breath, envision it becoming brighter and brighter, larger and larger. Keeping your focused awareness on your heart space, we're going to invite in an intention here, something that you'd like to bring more, more free flowing energy, more power to. So think to yourself now, what would you like to bring more energy to? What would you like to transmute into a higher vibrational frequency? What would you like to attract or manifest into your life, mental state, emotional state, or some external experience? Repeating it to yourself as if it's already your reality. Saying, I am or I have. I love myself. I am love. I'm worthy. I'm worthy of all of the pleasures of life. I am joyful and pleasant and fun. I have a calm and quiet, peaceful mind. I am strong, supported. I'm safe. I'm healthy. I am fully abundant in my life. My family's healthy and strong. Whatever your intention might be, just focus on one and repeat it to yourself silently. Knowing that with the energy that is created within you during this practice will help to feed that intention to give it more power.
deep inhale, gentle gaze, sweep the arms up overhead, bringing the palms to touch. Repeating your intention one last time. And with the exhale, bringing hands to heart and letting it go. Affirming that this intention is yours. It's already manifest in your reality. slowly opening up the eyes and feel free to continue with a gentle gaze it's um, it's nice to just um, relax away from the sensory information in the room and just focus on listening to the practice and following the instructions and keep it uh, most of your attention inward throughout so our first um, asana and our yin practice today is going to be waterfall um, there's several ways to do this. If you have a wall nearby that you can extend your legs up, feel free to do that. If not, you're lying down on your back and extending your legs up towards the ceiling. So you want your legs to be super straight, as straight as possible, um, flexing your toes towards your face. And if you like here, you can also bring your block or you can bring the cushion underneath your sacrum. So underneath that flat bone, just above your tailbone. So this should still be quite comfortable and restorative this way. Extend your arms above your head, palms facing up, and then closing the eyes. So seeing what version of the posture you'd like to be in, using a block or cushion or no support under the sacrum, or you can also have your legs up against the wall extended. So the, the purpose of this is not to be engaging too much um, muscular action here. Um, it's mainly just to feel that, um, feel the flow of blood rushing down the feet, circulating um, and um, just redirecting the flow of energy from the feet and back in towards the heart. Wherever you would like to be, we're going to be holding the posture for about four minutes. Using the sound of the bowls to integrate the energy, to also assist in the blood flow, assist in the releasing of any tension, to relax the body. experiencing any kind of twitching or discomfort in the legs just know that this is just your body recalibrating getting used to this position we're not often used to being in these types of inversions so our body and our nervous system is just finding a way to let go and prepare for relaxation to your breath, sending your breath anywhere you feel like you need to release more.
try not to analyze or judge, but also don't resist, allow them to be there. Just observing quietly. Curiosity, observing them from that space beyond the mind, space within, that space of I am. Knowing that you are not affected by your thoughts. affected by the outside world. You are timeless, limitless, causeless, formless. You are simply the observer. Taking three more deep inhales and exhales. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. Inhaling, belly expands, chest expands, inhaling all the way, and opening the mouth, letting it go. Good, one last time, inhaling deeply. An audible exhale. Releasing, relaxing. Good. Now coming out of this pose, wherever you are, even if you're up against the wall, bending your knees in. And then if you're against the wall, shifting your, uh, shifting your body away from the wall. And then bending your knees over. Bringing your knees together. Drawing them closer. And then bring your feet to either side of the mat. You'll feel a release in your sacrum here and a neutralizing of the spine. Just using this posture to reset the spine, reset the body. Palms are facing up, I'm just relaxing. When you're ready, very slowly bringing your feet back together, knees are together, and then using your arms and legs, try not to use the muscles of your back. Slowly roll yourself over onto your left side, and then pressing your way up very gently, coming back to seated. Great. Now entering into the next posture, grabbing your cushion or your bolster and placing it the length of the mat. Um, also, if you're not using a bolster for this posture, your cushion might not be long enough, so use a second cushion or pillow and bring it at the top of the mat. So we're going to come in to Supta Baddha Konasana, our um, reclined butterfly. So bringing your sacrum to the edge of the bolster or the edge of your cushion. And then begin slowly making your way down, very gently, lying onto your back. Your head should be supported here. Bringing the feet together now, so you want to connect the bottoms of your feet. Pressing them firmly together, try connecting all of the toes, connecting the heels. If it doesn't happen naturally, you don't need to force it, just do it with the best of your ability. Now, either bringing the hands above the head, holding opposite elbows, connecting your middle fingers to opposite elbows, or if you'd like, you can also bring your hand into Sun Mudra. So if you'd like, you could bring your hands along your side, palms facing up and Chin Mudra, maybe Prithvi Mudra, connecting your thumb and your earth element, your ring finger, allowing you to be more connected to your body, more grounded, more connected to our beautiful Mother Earth. And begin breathing nice and slowly here. 
Also checking in with your spine. Is it comfortable in this position? Maybe tucking your chin slightly. And if you like, you can also cover your eyes with the eye mask at any time you're holding one of these positions. Again, relaxing into the posture. Three more deep mindful breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Enjoying that feeling of releasing, inhaling, belly expands, chest expands, holding the breath for just a moment and then releasing completely. Inhaling all the way to your fullest capacity. When you're ready, releasing it out. Great. And now coming out of this posture, similar to before. So be very gentle. You've done quite a bit of um, like deep tissue stretching here. So we'll very gently, you can even use your hands to support your knees to bring them back together. And then again, bring your feet as wide as the mat, just heel toeing your feet to either side of the mat. And then again, just relaxing your hands, palms facing up. Taking a few breaths here. Allowing your spine to reset. When you're 
ready. Again, heel throwing your feet back together. And then rolling over onto your left side or your right, whatever is good for you. Shifting your hips to the side and coming up very slowly, using your arms to press your way up. And we'll prepare for the next posture. Our next posture is, one moment, our next posture is Anahatasana. So we can call this puppy pose in um, a sauna class, but we can also call this our melting heart pose. So Anahat is also heart in Sanskrit. So in this posture, I'll show the most challenging version first. So if we come into our Anahatasana, our puppy pose, um, each version of this posture, we want to bring our hips directly above the knees. Knees are hip distance apart. And then coming into the full version, walking your hands forward, we're going to start sinking the chest down into the mat. And if you can, lowering the chest completely down. And then chin to reach the mat. So that's the first version, which is the most challenging. But to bring it into more of a restorative version, we can bring our cushion or a bolster towards the front of the mat. And then bring your hands, also bring your hands the width of your shoulders as well if possible. If you need to, you can cross them. Remember, you don't want to create too much tension here. We're in for um, a deep interconnected tissue stretch not to create any damage in our nerves or in our joints. So um, just go as far as you feel comfortable. So again, lowering down, this time using the, the bolster or the cushion, and then resting the hands, shoulder width apart, and you can rest the forehead down onto the cushion as well. If you like the feel of that, stay there. If you want to go deeper, rest the forehead onto the mat. And again, if this is too much, you can also bring a block here or roll up your blanket and put it here to give more lift to your, um, to your forehead so you're not stretching your arms too much. So coming into your version of Anahatasana. If at any time you're feeling too much tension here, just feel free to come into child's pose, sitting back down on your heels and stretch the arms out. down to the mat, down to the earth.
Continue to focus on your breath. Noticing your breathing. Are you taking your full breaths? Taking three more deep inhales and exhales. Inhaling through the nose, opening the mouth, exhaling it out. Inhaling, belly expands, chest expands, reaching your fullest capacity. And open the mouth, letting it go. Inhaling. And exhale. Good. Now very slowly and gently coming out of the posture, very mindfully, we're actually going to slip into our child's pose. So just begin very slowly, bending the elbows, using your hands to bring yourself into child's pose, sitting down onto your heels, Relaxing the forehead onto the mat, or maybe onto a cushion, and then bring the hands behind you, palms facing up, releasing the shoulders. up into seated into your Vajrasana, just allowing the energy to move through your body, redirecting the blood flow from your head down, back down to your heart, into your whole circulatory system. Now coming onto our backs, we're going to lay down and now it's time to grab your strap or your scarf. So if you're joining in, I mentioned that I was giving um, some options for uh, people at home who don't have the um, yoga equipment. So instead of a strap, you can use a scarf. If you don't have either right now, I don't encourage you to um, go find one. More, it's more about relaxing, so we'll give another option for that. So lying down onto the back, so we're going to do Supta Padagastasana in more of a yin version, more of a restorative version. So bringing the strap, if you have one, or a scarf around your foot, holding that scarf or strap with just your right hand, and then relax your elbow down onto the mat. So in this version, you're not extending your arm, you're bending it. So bringing it as high up into a 90 degree angle, vertical, as you can. You may be down here or down here, wherever you're at, it's totally fine. Keeping your leg as straight as possible where you're at. Um, if you need to, you can bend your knee. And then flexing your toes towards you, so back down at your face. Flexing your left toes as well, and use your left hand to press your left hip down. So straightening the spine, Gaze is towards the ceiling, but then closing the eyes and holding here. Nice, slow, steady breaths. 
Again, feeling those sensations that you experience from having those, your legs elevated. Oftentimes there's a rush, a rush of blood flow, a rush of energy from all of that stagnant energy um, that's kind of um, collected at the, at the feet. And also our energy of the, the chakras in the feet. And allowing the energy there to be more free flowing. Nice, slow, steady breaths. We're going to hold this for um, only two minutes and then we're going to switch to the other foot. Always bringing your awareness back to your breath. Observing it with curiosity. How does it change from one situation to another, from one pose to another? And once we bring our awareness to our breath, we often find ourselves breathing more deeply, more slowly. So just keeping that in mind as well when we're in maybe a stressful situation, bringing our attention back inward will allow our breath to relax, which then relaxes our nervous system and then our whole bodies. Good. One more deep inhale. Open the mouth, letting it go. Good. Very, very slowly, just loosening your grip on your scarf, your strap, as you slowly lower the leg down, very, very slowly. Until it's all the way rested on the mat. And you can bring your palms facing up, relaxing your toes to either side of the mat. Just a quick shavasana. Closing the eyes and observing any sensations you're feeling in your right leg, especially. Observing how it might feel a little different than your left leg. Maybe it feels like you've created some length there. And you're ready. Switching sides. So if you already have your foot in the loop, you can just slide your left foot in there, remove your right foot and then switch hands as well. So bring your right hand to your right hip, pressing it down, and then extending your left leg up towards the ceiling, and then making sure that you have a tight grip on your scarf or your strap, and then allowing your elbow to relax down onto the mat. Both toes are flexed, right toes are flexed towards the ceiling, left toes are flexed towards you, and then begin Closing the eyes, long straight spine, you can tuck your chin in slightly, allow your neck and spine to be in a straight line. And again, focusing on the breath. Being aware of your breath, the inhales and the exhales. Always redirecting our awareness to our breath, and this will help us to let go of any external thoughts happening. Quieting the mind, and just being the observer. Taking one more deep inhale here. Exhaling, letting it go. Inhaling. With a nice slow exhale, very slowly lowering the left foot. 
very slowly and gently with control, observing any sensations as you're making your way down, releasing your strap or scarf, palms facing up, and now observing any sensations in your left leg. Observing the difference between the left and the right. Maybe the left feels longer or maybe you've stretched it out to be the same length. And a few more breaths here. Release your strap completely, your scarf completely, placing it over to the side. We're going to come into a restorative bridge. So restorative bridge, we can use a block or you can also use your cushion or you can use both. So choose what you'd like to use for this and you place the block and or the cushion underneath your sacrum. So should be rested on that flat bone that's just above your tailbone. So it should still feel quite comfortable and restorative by doing this. Straightening both legs. And then maybe as you do this, it changes the position of your sacrum. So readjust if needed. Good. And now bringing the hands, let's bring our hands into our goddess arms or our, um, our goal post arms. So bringing your elbows bent at 90 degrees, your elbows are in the same line as your shoulders, just opening up your heart a little more. Nice slow steady breaths, finding your version of restorative bridge. If you'd like, you can also change the level of your block if you want have it on level one, level two, or if you want to go very deep, level three. Choosing something that you would like to hold for the next few minutes. Steady breaths. Connecting with your heart space. Nice, slow, deep breaths, expanding the lungs, creating more space for your heart to beat, to expand. or close all of the awareness inward.
Taking three more deep breaths. Inhaling through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth. Deep inhale, belly expands, chest expands. Exhale, letting it go. Inhaling all the way. And exhale. And when you're ready, using your hands and your legs pressing into the mat to lift your hips up removing the block removing the bolster and then slowly lowering back down onto the mat bringing the knees together separating the feet as wide as the mat palms facing up and just aligning your spine for a few breaths Inhale, bringing your feet together, heel toeing them, bringing your knees together. Now shift your hips to the right side of your mat and drop your knees together to the left side of your mat. So doing a little spinal twist. If you'd like, you can bring your left hand onto your right knee, extending your right arm, gazing over your right shoulder, closing the eyes and taking a few breaths here. Sending that breath down your spine, connecting to your sacrum, to the interconnected tissue there. Inhaling, slowly bringing the knees back up to center, shifting your hips to the left side of the mat and dropping your knees to the right side of the mat using your hand as a guide if you like and gazing over your left shoulder and breathing into your lungs filling up your belly feeling a releasing of the spine with your breath Inhaling, coming back to center. And if you feel like you need any um, additional movements before coming into Shavasana, feel free. And wherever you're at, eventually making your way into full Shavasana. So palms are facing up. Your feet are as wide as the mat. Relaxing your toes to either side of the mat. Closing the eyes, tucking the chin. Releasing the uh, shoulders away from your ears. If you like, you can put your eye mask on, bringing your blanket over you or maybe under your head. Whatever you feel like you would benefit from, from being more relaxed in your Shavasana. Just Beginning to relax your whole body. Allowing your breath to slow down, releasing any control you have over your breath.
relaxing your chest, letting your heart soften, relaxing your upper back, your shoulders, your arms, all of your little fingers gently curled, relax. Relaxing your neck, your jaw, your cheeks. Relaxing all of the little muscles around your eyes. Your forehead smooth. is relaxed. Your body is relaxed. Your body is completely relaxed. back to your body, back to your breath. And we're going to end this practice right here, lying down in Shavasana. Feel free to stay here as long as you like. 
enjoying this comfortable space that you've created for yourself. Enjoying it for however much longer you feel will support you. Taking a moment here to honor your practice, to acknowledge the space and the energy that you've created within you today. To acknowledge the beautiful gift that you've given to yourself by just being present here today. Connecting with yourself, connecting with your essence. And affirming that for the rest of the day, you will do your best to encourage loving and peaceful thoughts, loving and peaceful words, and loving and peaceful actions. Namaste. Thank you for joining.